lights on this aircraft are on the wingtip. The strobes landing and position lights are all recessed into the wingtips and the lens is flush with the wingtip. This is not standard on all legacies. In fact, many of the legacies I've seen don't have this. They have the strobes and the position lights sticking out into the airflow and in those, in those aircraft, the landing lights are either attached to the gear leg or uh, are built into the inboard section of the wing. Each wing has its own fuel tank. Each side holds 33 gallons, so the plane total holds 66 gallons. A little bit of that's unusable. For flight planning purposes in this plane, I plan with 63 gallons. I also flight plan for about 11 gallons per hour, so that gives me a fairly decent range, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. This aircraft and many legacies have electrically actuated speed brakes from Precise Flight. Uh, some legacies don't have them, but I think in general, in this particular aircraft, you definitely want them. And for good reason. This is a really hard plane to slow down, especially during descents. I've actually heard pilot friends call speed brakes a crutch for pilots who can't plan ahead. And there's, there's definitely some truth to that, but I think it's more true on a draggy aircraft, um, not on a very slick, very fast-moving aircraft. Especially during descents, it's really hard in this plane to stay below the speed limits. Uh, more so near busy airports where the controllers don't want you speeding besides slower traffic. And of course, you could always pull the throttle right down and you'll start to slow down in this plane, but it does take a long time. And pulling back your power, especially during descents, is one of the best ways to shock cool your engine, which is something you typically don't want to do. These brakes let you maintain enough power to keep your engine warm while you slow down, preventing shock cooling. Uh, when they come up, they double aircraft drag and they double the normal rate of descent, which is really nice. And they are deployable at any speed below VNE, which in this aircraft is 275 knots. I wouldn't consider them essential equipment, but they sure are nice to have, especially if you find yourself having to slow down quickly and maybe a little bit unexpectedly some days. The ailerons are high aspect ratio ailerons and there is electric trim on them. In fact, on this aircraft, there's electric trim on all three axes. This is an aircraft where you definitely want to be able to change the trim on the axes, the rudder, elevator, and the ailerons as you change flight configurations from climb to cruise to descent. Uh, this, this aircraft needs very little input. It's not a plane that you fly heavy-handedly. The throws in the controls are actually quite small. So as you go through the various stages of flight and you change the configuration from climb to cruise or into descent, you need just little touches of trim here and there to stay perfectly configured. The aileron trim is used mostly as I burn fuel off of each side, out of each tank. Uh, the plane is very sensitive to weight distribution and I find that a touch of trim just keeps you flying straight and level. The flaps deserve to be called out specifically. The Legacy has a surprisingly low stall speed for its wing loading which it achieves mainly by virtue of its uh, really well-designed displaced hinge, full-slotted Fowler flaps. Uh, in the Legacy, they are electrically driven. Uh, different builders have different ways of controlling the flaps. In my aircraft, I have a two-position switch. First position is about 11, 12 degrees of flaps, and that's for takeoff. Second position is about 38, uh, 39 degrees of flaps, and that's for landing. The stall speed in this plane is really slow considering the wing loading. Uh, clean, I stall at 70 knots, which is eh, nothing to write home about, but that drops to 63 knots with takeoff flaps and a ridiculously low 55 knots with landing flaps. Uh, much, this is a much slower stall speed than a Cirrus, which has a larger wing and uh, lighter wing loading. Uh, the approach speed with full flaps is fast, but it's comparable to other modern aircraft, I'd argue. I come in over the fence at 100 knots and I touch the mains down at about 80 knots. 